had a buyer reach out and said, hey, Ethan, I saw the chart that you posted in one of your videos previously that said that demand for million dollar homes in Nashville are higher. Would love to hear your take on the million dollar market. Now, I thought this was an interesting question and it's certainly one that I've been helping a lot of buyers with. I thought what I would do this time is a little bit more technical. I'm gonna take you through my thought process on the million dollar market and we're gonna do it by zooming in on Franklin, Tennessee. And I'm gonna show you some ways you can use data to actually create massive advantages for you when you approach buying and selling, but particularly for buyers, as that's who I primarily help. So without further ado, let's take a look at the data. Now, this first chart right here, this is Franklin, Tennessee, million dollar listings. And this blue line, it's your active listings. And the red line is your contract volume. Notice that we have more active listings in the million dollar space right now in Franklin, Tennessee than we've ever had. Okay. It's certainly going back to 22. We have four times the inventory we had just in 2022. Now that sounds very bearish, but look at, look at demand. Demand has been very consistent between 50 and 100. Now, when we take these two things and we compare them to each other, we can create a ratio. It's actually very volatile. And you can see when it spikes, you have these huge opportunities to buy. It spiked last fall. It spiked again in January of this year. It spiked again just a month ago. It's actually tightened up since then. This tightening that we're seeing right now is pretty typical right before school starts. People are jumping in and buying last minute. See if we go back and look, even though our active listings are as high as they've ever been, look at our contract volume. It's starting to jump up. It's jumping up because people are trying to buy that last minute before school starts. But let's keep going on the million dollar market here in Franklin, Tennessee. If we take this same chart but we overlay it year over year over year. So we can see, is this higher than last year? Let's just compare using each line for a different year. And you can see here, this green line is 2024, red is 2023, and blue is 2022. We're, we're converging on about the same supply as we've had every year. So even though our active listings are as high as they've ever been, with demand, we're essentially around the same amount of supply that we've had every year. Now price, we're right back up to that frothy level we saw two years ago, $430 a square foot. But check this out, median contract price just dipped massively. And when we looked at that, by the way, that's kind of your leading indicator, right? Contract price, things that are going under contract are already at a lower price per foot. Some of those are because of things that have already cut their price on. Check this out. Price cuts. Our price cuts are going vertical right now. Our price cuts are going vertical. So even though we have relatively the same amount of supply that we've had for the past two years, we've got price cuts going absolutely vertical. Guys, sellers are so nervous right now. They're so nervous. I think this is creating a fantastic window to buy in. Okay. Now look, I don't know the future of prices. I told you I stopped forecasting that. There's so many government games played. I'm not going to tell you where prices are going to go. If you can't handle a, a big correction in prices, you shouldn't buy, but there's no guarantee that will happen. No guarantee that will happen. But if you really, if you can't handle it, buy something you can afford and don't worry about it. But I will tell you, this right here is telling me prices are about to drop. And by the way, guys, Make aggressive offers, okay? If you if you want to if you're worried about price drops, just go ahead and make the offer that you're comfortable with, and that's that's one of the things I want you to know is you really do need an agent that's comfortable with making aggressive offers. And you, if you use data, you can make aggressive offers respectfully. You don't have to offend people; they can choose to be offended. But the bottom line is, is that right now we're at a place where contract price is dropping, we've got price cuts going through the roof. Even though the supply is the same, I would be making aggressive offers. They're dropping their price because they would love an offer. So be aggressive on your offers. Don't, don't feel bad uh, and don't fall in love with the house. If you fall in love with the house, it's over.
No more aggressive on the offers. You do that. This is a year over year view of that same price cut chart. And you can see it's just, again, it's just going vertical. It's, it's going vertical. So we can take advantage of what appears to be a 2022 style drop in price. What do you do with this? This is still, this is still macro. This doesn't tell me anything about an individual neighborhood. And believe it or not, there are neighborhoods that are very strong right now. So how do you know if a neighborhood has strong demand or if it feels much different? There's a couple of ways to do this, but what we like to do, here's Lad Park, okay? Lad Park, I've showed this neighborhood before. It's just south east of 65 of Franklin, Tennessee. And in Ladd Park, we have we have a median price of right at 915. Properties over the last year hitting 1.3, but I got to tell you, two years ago, they were at 1.5 and, and higher, 1.7. It was wild. So the fact that the max price is 1.3 tells you it's already been a major price adjustment in this neighborhood. But let's zoom in on this neighborhood. Here we can see, by the way, I added this chart. I'm so glad I added this because this is going to tell us when you have a buyer's market or when you have a seller's market. Now, if you don't have this chart, which by the way, I, I'll, I provide to my buyers and I provide to anybody who subscribes, pays for my sub stack. I spend a lot of time on this. This is valuable data. So I still, if you can't tell, I feel guilty about charging people, but this is so powerful guys, because what I'm showing you right here is that same blue and red chart, only it's zoomed in on the neighborhood we're looking at let's just look at active listings here. So our active listings are actually lower than where they were last year. They're about the same nine and we're at, we're at nine. So they're the same. Okay. Now let's look at contract volume. Contract volume is eight. Okay. Last year in this neighborhood, contract volume was two. That was a window to buy last year. Now it's much, much tighter. And you can see it's been tight really since May. So this neighborhood actually tightened up quite a bit. Now, when we overlay price cuts, that's this green chart. This green bar tells you how many active listings have dropped their price. And you can see when active listings spike, so do price drops. This would have been a good time to buy. Last July. This July, much tighter in this neighborhood. Much tighter in this neighborhood. So if you're going to try to get aggressive when of the 18 listings that are uh, that are open, half of them are under contract right now and the price drops have dropped, you're kind of being naive about the strength of the neighborhood right now, okay? You're kind of being naive. Now, we can pick another neighborhood though. So let's do West Haven. It's got a lot of volume. It's easy to see. Now, West Haven here, you can see we're at 44 active listings with 18 under contract, okay? 44 with 18 under contract. We go back to last year and look, we had we had 35, so we have more inventory now than we had last year at this time, and we have less demand. We had 21 under contract in the last 31 days. Now we only have 18 under contract. This is a weaker market. Let's see how our price cuts look, and you can see our price cuts are at 12. Go back. 12 is about the max number of listings that get cut. Sometimes we see 13 and maybe we'll see 13 this week because I got to tell you, it's looking kind of soft in West Haven. This is the opportunity. Interestingly enough, the median price is not reflecting the opportunity we see on the supply and demand of this neighborhood. So it's real important when you look at the dynamics, you know, Lad Park, much stronger. You're going to be shooed out of there if you're trying to be a smarty pants and make aggressive offers when you're not paying attention, the dynamics of that neighborhood are much stronger. Whereas this neighborhood, West Haven, West Haven's been soft, especially the older houses. They've been very soft this year. There's opportunity in West Haven. I know I mentioned this, but people have delisted because they couldn't sell their house. What do you do when you find, let's say a neighborhood that has opportunity? You're gonna wanna find comps for the specific house you're looking at. But once you find those comps, and again, we, we look at all that. We plot price per square foot by age. I mean, it's crazy how much age impacts the price. And I can tell you right now, a 2009 at 437, that's the reason it's been on the market 80 days. You're going to be under 400 a foot for a 2009 house. Okay, so you're not going to get $437 a foot on this house. It's a good location, but 2009, I'm just telling you, I, I don't think you will. So that's why it's been on the market a long time. Let's see if they cut their price. Notice they just cut their price 110,000. They're still overpriced. I don't know what they were thinking. 
Maybe because it's smaller. I mean, it's a 2,700 square foot house. Maybe that's why. I don't know. But it seems expensive to me. I don't think you're going to get $400 a foot. I think they're still 10% overpriced. This is why I make aggressive offers because I just think things are worth less than maybe other people. So going into West Haven and we look at price per square foot, we can find all these comps under 400 foot and we can tell a 206 Fitz, Fitzgerald. Let's just let's just look at 206 Fitzgerald and see. Closed on 7-12-2024, so just closed for 1,045,000. You can see it's 2,700 square feet. It's a house. So you have a house that just closed. It was three years newer than that house and it sold for 390 a foot. It's about the same size. So see, Elliot's got a problem here. They're trying to sell for 437 a foot because they got a new roof. I don't know. I don't know. It just, I'm not going to take the time to actually, you know, picture by picture critique it here. But my point is, is that's how we figure out what to offer. So now if I'm looking at Elliot and now I know that I want to offer 390 a foot, I'm going to offer probably 385 a foot times 2691, maybe 390 a foot, but I'm offering a million between a million 25 and a million 50 for this house. Okay. So if, if you're a buyer and you're, you're trying to figure out what to pay for this house, that that's how you do it. And then you submit the offer. It's really that simple. You're asking $125,000 off in this house. Just see what they say. Just see what they say. If you need to get it at 390 a foot, if you're saying, nope, that's taught, that's that, that comp, that's what I'm using. I got to get it at 390 foot. Maybe you go 380, 370 and you just real firm on it. Look, they're either going to move or they're not. And as long as you're not too attached to the house, yes, you offer right at a million bucks. Offer a million dollars on this house and just say, look, active listings are up, contracts are down, price cuts are up, and prices are moving down. Someone just sold their house for $390 a foot and you're asking for $437. If you're serious about selling it, we're open to buying it, but we're not going to buy it at $437 a foot. So if you want to move on the price, move on the price. You can get people to move about, I would say, especially in a soft market, you can get people to move. They may not come down where you want them to, but I guarantee you they'll move off this, off this price. And if they really want to move it, you know, that's what you have to see. Like, do they really want to move it? They may not. I don't know. That's kind of how we approach making an offer on a house like this. You show them the data and you're like, look, data's not looking good. My buyer wants the house, but they're not going to overpay for it. They're going to pay market for it. And market right now is trending down. So if you want to meet us where market is, we'll buy it. If you don't, like maybe you'll sell it. I don't know. Maybe there's someone that wants to pay for 37 a foot. We just don't see it. We've done that several times and we've been very successful at getting very large discounts. Our last closing was last week and the house was 1.35. They dropped the price and then we asked for $150,000 off and they dropped it another 75. So we ended up getting over $100,000 off the list price on that house. We think we got it at fair market value. They they think that they, you know, the sellers obviously thought it was worth more than than they they sold it for, but we think we think we fought hard to get a good fair market value for that house and we were successful. So, one of the advantages you have when price drops go up like they're going up now is you can be very aggressive on price and look, if they don't have an offer, they're going to respond. Okay? They're going to try to work what they have in front of them. So, don't don't let people intimidate you. Don't let people make you feel bad for trying to protect your investment, protect your home, protect your home price. Just be aggressive. If you're thinking about buying a million dollar home, this gives you some ammo. Even as demand is strong, supply is what's making people freak out. It's a great opportunity to be aggressive on price. Thanks for watching.